the clutter is back. Ugh. We've all been there. Maybe you've been decluttering really hard and putting a lot of work in, and next thing you know, you turn around and there's a new pile of clutter sitting on the countertop or on top of the table. This is a very common cycle, so let's talk about it because this cycle is common, but it doesn't mean it has to happen to you. And you don't have to be at the mercy of clutter, I promise. You can actually end that clutter cycle today for a much more stress-free life. Hey, I'm Katie Wells. I'm a declutter expert, and today I wanna to talk to you about how to step out of a really common common clutter cycle that's likely causing you to be stuck in clutter. Now, in my last video, we talked about procrastination and perfectionism, and those two in their own right are really common cycles that keep us stuck in clutter. But today, I wanna talk to you about a new one, well, one you've probably been doing for a long time that you should probably stop like yesterday, okay? <laughs> and that is focusing on the things coming into your home, the inflow. And a big, big reason that this happens in the first place is shopping, right? It doesn't matter how much you get rid of, you can declutter every single day, but if you are constantly, you or your family are constantly bringing in new things to your home, it's gonna be an uphill battle. You have to at least bring awareness into how things are coming into your home, what types of things you're buying, your shopping habits, your partner's shopping habits, your kids' shopping habits, if they're old enough to shop, thank goodness mine are not quite there yet. <laughs> and all of the above. I know we never want to admit we're part of the problem, right? It's so easy to point the finger at our little kids or a partner for not picking up after themselves, but we have to look at the stuff coming into our homes. And the truth of the matter is for a lot of people that is impulse shopping. Did you know that recent studies show 95% of Americans make in-store impulse purchases and 88% of people buy things impulsively online. Now, if you spend time on Instagram, maybe Instagram stories, you were probably so used to seeing the swipe up or right tap to buy now. We are being conditioned on all platforms, on all fronts to constantly buy. And a lot of these, we weren't planning on buying yesterday. There probably wasn't a lot of intention put into it, which is really the definition of impulse shopping, right? You weren't planning to buy a new pair of shoes when you woke up today, but someone you followed posted a really cute pair and you just had to have them, right? That's impulse shopping. And what I've learned over the years, and this is so important to understand, is that buying things actually gives us a false sense of control and this security. So anytime the world is feeling out of control or maybe you have a lot of stressors in your life or you're going through a big transition or everything just feels out of control, people are much more likely to hop on their phones or head to Target, wherever you spend your shopping. So on this note, I want you to start paying attention to what's happening in your physical environment, the, the space you are spending time in when you are purchasing. So if you are not purchasing in the store and you're purchasing on your phone, doing a lot of these purchases on your phone, what's happening? in your physical environment? Is there a lot of clutter around? Are the kids running around? You're overwhelmed? What's happening? What's happening in your environment and what's happening in this environment? Are you stressed? Are you resentful? Are you feeling guilty? Are you feeling ashamed? What type of emotions, thoughts, or feelings are you having? And when you can identify the pattern of that trigger that is then one causing you to pick up your phone and hop on your favorite shopping app, that is helping you get to the root of those impulse purchases to begin with. It's so important. And not only that, but emotion and life's pressure can really trigger us to seek this comfort. And let's call it what it is. It's often a distraction through what feels good. And for a lot of us, that is shopping. And trust me, I understand firsthand because I am a recovering shopaholic. Anytime I needed a distraction from stress or any type of uncomfortable feeling I was having or emotion, I hopped onto my phone. And at the time I was using Amazon. Amazon was my place. And then once I found these discount shopping apps, it was like a whole new world opened up. And literally every single day, I was on my phone hitting buy now to just help distract me from the stress I was feeling. And as we try to cope, that root of the issue, the stress or uncomfortable feeling is not addressed. And we are left with this fleeting kind of dopamine or happiness hit, maybe you've heard it called. But the thing is that feeling only lasts for a few seconds. And the goalpost of happiness or the goalpost of contentment <laughs> or whatever it is you're trying to achieve through purchasing said thing, it keeps getting further and further away because we don't gain true happiness or contentment or fill in the blank when we buy new material possessions. And over time, a lot of these impulse purchases end up just becoming clutter, slowly refilling our homes. And I get it, right? When we're in the moment, we can often justify it and go, well, this is a good deal. Or, well, I don't have this top in this color or those shoes are so cute. And I know, I think I'm gonna wear them every day. But often 
oftentimes these impulse purchases, things that we don't put a ton of intention and thought into become clutter. And that clutter increases your stress levels and impacts your home, impacts your bank account, and so much more. The idea here is to start bringing awareness into what's triggering you to potentially impulse shop, whether it's in a store or on your phone, and then start replacing that habit with a different one. And the thing with impulse shopping is a lot of people, once they start realizing, hey, you know what, actually a lot of my purchases aren't intentional or planned. And yeah, like she's right. I actually do impulse shop more than maybe I want to admit. So then they go like the opposite and it becomes like this idea of like, I have to be perfect and never impulse shop. And if I do, I'm going to be really judgmental. I'm going to shame and blame myself. And then I'm going to feel awful for, you know, have major buyer's remorse and stuff like that. So the idea here isn't just to go straight into perfection and never impulse shop again. Listen, I still on occasional impulse shop. It's really rare, but it still happens. I'm human and I don't bash myself for it. If it gets to my house and I go, you know what? I could have put more thought and energy into this and realized I don't need it after all. Then I ship it back. I send it back. It's not the end of the world. So don't be so hard on yourself, but bring in awareness. How are you feeling when you want to shop? Are you feeling stressed? Are you feeling bored? Those are two really common reasons why a lot of people impulse shop. And if you spend any amount of time on social media, I personally, I really enjoy Instagram, but we have to be so careful because it can be so easy, even for someone like me to maybe follow a celebrity or someone I respect, or maybe someone who's like clothing style you love or homemaking style you love. And then what happens before we know it is we her brain goes, well, how can I be more like that person? I respect them. Maybe you share the same values. Maybe you want to be more like them. And so our brain starts to go like, literally, how can I buy my way into her life? And I started doing that unbeknownst to me with a young influencer I was following. I followed her because I liked a lot of the brands she promotes. And before I knew it, I found myself wanting to buy every single thing she was promoting, which is a lot because that's what she does for a living. And so before I hit add to cart or buy now, I thought, why am I trying to buy my way into her life? Well, for me, she's about 20. She doesn't have kids. Uh, she's not married. She has a lot of freedom in her life. And while I love being married, I love having kids. I love my life now. There's a little teeny tiny part of me that misses that freedom, right? She's going to concerts. She's traveling anywhere she wants to all the time, right? On Instagram, you see that perfect after living her best life, right? Of course, we never know what happens behind closed doors, but my brain will still going like, I want that. I want to go to concerts and travel and do all those things I used to do, right? And I can still do all those things, but this is how our brain operate. My brain thought, well, you can't reverse the clock, Katie. You can't be 20 again, but you can buy that top. You can buy that necklace. You can buy that cute new pair of shoes and you'll be maybe a little bit closer to that lifestyle or that age or whatever it is you are striving for with that influencer, celebrity, whoever it is. So we can't truly, we cannot buy our way into a happier life and we cannot buy our way out of an unhappy life. And that advice right there, my friend, has literally saved me thousands and thousands of dollars and continues to do so. And it's also prevented so much clutter, stuff that would become clutter from coming into my home and keeping me stuck in that clutter cycle. So whether you catch yourself impulse shopping or maybe you're more of an intentional shopper or come combination of the two, here's one question I want you to ask yourself every single time you buy something from here on out. That question is, where will this item live in my home? Oftentimes we stay in this clutter cycle when it comes to shopping and things coming in, new things, whether you brought them in or someone else in your family, and we don't have a home for it. So this type of stuff lands on countertops, any surface area, dressers, tables. It doesn't matter. It lands on the floor sometimes because there's not space in where you would like to put it. Maybe, maybe you need to declutter something to, in order to, for it to fit where you want it. And then not only are you battling clutter, you are getting stuck in what I call the stuff shuffle. You are a chronic stuff shuffler. You're moving things from pile to pile to pile, trying to organize, trying to find it, locate it, but really you're not making any progress. You're stuck in this cycle and it's really, really frustrating. And it all happens because you didn't create a home for that item in the start. So yes, it does take time and consideration and attention to create homes for these things and make homes for these things. But in the long Long run, you're actually going to save a lot of time and energy and frustration. So find a home for everything that comes into your home. If you don't want to make a home or find a home for something, that's a surefire way of letting you know you just need to let it go. Get rid of it. 
So make sure to bring awareness into the inflow of things and how they are coming into your home. If you skip this part, it's kind of like being in a canoe with a hole in it. And instead of focusing on plugging the hole, it, your attention goes into just emptying the water that's filling up into your canoe with a bucket, right? And dumping it out and out and out. But if you don't plug the hole, you're constantly going to be dumping that water out and out and out and it will be a bumpy ride. <laughs> this analogy plays so beautifully into what we're talking about today, right? So if you've fallen into cycles of clutter, don't worry, you are definitely not alone and you can break free of it. Your next step, if you wanna make huge amounts of progress, is to join my upcoming 14-day Clutter Crusher Challenge. So we kick off on Monday, September 12th, and this challenge is perfect for you. No matter where you are on your declutter journey, you will walk away with so many new tools and resources to add to your declutter tool belt and make so much progress. These 14 day challenges are life changing, but don't take my word for it. My student Lucilla said, Katie's 14 day challenge gave me the tools I needed and empowered me to declutter 30 years worth of stuff. I love my new peaceful home and how simple it is to maintain. Erica said, I have tried everything to declutter. You name it, I've done it, but I failed at it all. I found Katie's channel and podcast and made great progress, decided to sign up for her challenge. Not only did I make more progress than I ever thought was possible, her system is actually sustainable and I've been able to keep the clutter away. Life-changing is an understatement. Y'all, I hope you join us there. It starts off Monday, September 12th. I'll put the link nearby. What are you waiting for? Make sure to join us. Do this with a community of like-minded people on the same path to declutter their home, simplify their life, and make time for what really matters. I can't wait to help you save time, energy, and love your home again.